Hey everyone, welcome to another build. Uh, this time I'm going to be doing something different. I've done a few of these DIY uh, miniature houses or dollhouse sets. And uh, this one I'm actually doing is called Bach Theater. And uh, it's actually, you can get it on Amazon and on eBay I believe. And I cannot actually figure out who the actual manufacturer is for this one. But as you can see, uh, the whole reason why it's called a Bach Theater is because you build the whole model within the small tin set box. And it comes with an instructional manual and it comes with the stand that you just put the two pieces together and it's kind of slightly angled so that you can put the box theater on top of it to display. Now these box theaters uh, come with all the parts and then they will have like the uh, manual that shows you each step and then the back you will have these paper um, that you will actually cut out and paste onto some of the pieces like the wood pieces to create your DIY uh, dollhouse. And for the set, I'm going to be using some uh, tools and so some uh, tweezers, scissors, actually a lot of tweezers, and then an X-Acto knife. And then um, I will be using a glue. So in this case, I will be using tacky glue. Um, and the small bottle that you see in there is actually tacky glue. I just put it inside of a separate uh, small bottle. And I'm actually going to try using the Mod Podge. Uh, this is actually a spray unit so that instead of just brushing it on, you can actually just spray it and I'm going to be testing it out to see how it works. So the first thing I like doing is I actually just take uh, the pieces of paper with the prints that you need to be cutting out and actually go ahead and uh, actually cut every piece out just so that I'm actually saving some time by just being in like an assembly line and so I'm just going to uh, cut everything out into pieces and have them uh, to the side to have them ready because I don't like having to go back and forth picking up my exacto knife cutting the, the paper and then gluing it onto the piece and then going back and cutting another piece of paper so I kind of wanted to just uh, do it all at once now uh, a little tip when you're doing these uh, cutouts is to if you're using exacto knife always cut from the inside out and what that means is that you don't have your blade going in towards the, the colored paper you actually always uh, always cut out of it and that actually gives you clean cuts so that you don't actually have any crossovers and uh, so you know that's a good tip to have now here I'm actually trying to use the Mod Podge uh, spray set and the spray comes out pretty nicely but the problem was that with the Mod Podge it's more wet uh, the typical glue and so it actually ends up kind of making the paper soggy especially because this paper isn't really the greatest quality paper I actually don't like the sheen like the how shiny the paper itself is so um, I noticed with you know with the uh, Mod Podge spray it actually damps it really quickly and then if you start rubbing to get it applied onto the surface uh, what ends up happening is on the top side where the print is it starts to smudge off because it's wet and so i think this is just a uh, kind of a poor paper quality issue and uh, maybe mod podge is just not the best tool to use but if you use something like tacky glue what ends up happening is that unless you're brushing it on you're going to leave these kind of like thicker portions of the glue that the surface of the paper is going to be very uneven um, so you know just watch out for that when you're doing this DIY I still haven't figured out the best method um, I could probably just use Mod Podge with a paintbrush kind of like how I do my paper theater series and brush it on except that um, I won't be using it as often so I will be worried about the brush drying off really quickly um, and not being using not using it enough to actually warrant uh, using the paintbrush so I will actually be going between a couple different glues. Sometimes I'll be using a super glue um, and or actually they call, the one I specifically use is called Instacure which works really great. Um, as you can see here I'm actually creating the top of the carousel and uh, I put the LED light in. So the whole kit comes with the LED lights and the only thing that's actually missing from the kit actually it depends on who you buy it from too. As I've actually stated this miniature uh, dollhouse set, the box theater set uh, multiple people are selling it on eBay and Amazon but the brand name that they put on it is their own uh, company and not the actual uh, manufacturer and what's interesting is so my guess is that this set is actually created by a factory and they just apply it to all these people and so the, they sell these kits as their own kits and so it's kind of hard to find the brand name 
um, I believe when I asked my friend uh, to read the Chinese of it, she was saying that the manufacturer was a trading company, uh, but maybe the brand name is called DIY Miniature House or Miniature Kit. So um, as you can see here, I'm actually testing out the LED lights. Um, and so the, as I was saying before, depending on who you buy it from, it may or may not include the glue and the, uh, the battery. And so in this case, I'm using uh, this LR44, I believe is the battery number. Um, and it, this time it didn't come with it, but the glue, they came with a glue, but the glue is really not that great. It's kind of like a liquid super glue, or actually not super glue, but a liquid hot gun. And the problem with that is it gets really stringy and really sticky. And so I actually always throw that away and just start using tacky glue because it just seems to wield a better uh, yield uh, of the glue and also just like it becomes less messier because you don't get like a string of glue. Um, but in this case, I had I actually bought a pack of batteries from Amazon. It's so like a 20 pack for like $7. And so I have a stock of them um, in my drawer so that I can always use these for these models. So when you're buying it, just be sure to see what's included or not included. Typically they will state that the battery and the glue is not included in the set and that you'll have to supply your own. Um, so that will be the only thing from this whole DIY kit that is not included. So uh, just be aware of that. So one thing about these kits that were very difficult for me were um, they required to cut out these small pieces a lot of times and they will give you a little template to follow along for the curvature and the size but the problem is uh, the template itself is really small and then you have to cut out identical pieces from it that I actually ended up going between the X-Acto knife and the scissor depending on what made more sense. Um, the X-Acto knife would work for the most part unless you're starting to do these curvatures and with the curvature it's really hard to get a smooth surface for such a small area that you actually end up starting to fray the sides of it that um, I would end up just using the scissor to do the curvature and then finish it off with X-Acto knife to, for the straight edges. So the kit comes with these wires that you need to straighten out and then using a wire cutter cut into strips to be uh, putting it onto the carousel, uh, I guess the column face. And so you will be doing a lot of these kind of DIY stuff in this kit where they give you the base materials. So sometimes they will give you like a twine um, that you need to unravel and then you can make that into hay uh, for like a hay roof. Um, so you will actually be getting a lot of these just basic materials to work from. So it is actually kind of very DIY even though they give you the whole kit. There's a lot of stuff that you need to uh, kind of do on your own and you know none of the wires come pre-cut and not, a lot of these pieces come these whole pieces that you actually need to either unravel or cut or straighten out um, or bend and um, actually make it work with this model. And one thing about this DIY set that I actually don't really like is that a lot of times for the base you're actually going to be putting like a paper cover over and then you're going to be gluing on these pieces and as you saw with the carousel I'm gluing on the horses onto a piece of paper. Problem with that is that as you're moving it around or you're doing things what ends up happening is that the the paper gets wet from the glue and then it will actually start tearing off so I actually end up ended up uh, removing the horse and putting it gluing it back on multiple times because the carousel uh, horses uh, kept uh, coming off because the paper started to get uh, started ripping and so this is the only thing that I did not like about this DIY set in general is just the paper itself and I just don't like how um, you glue things onto the paper and I don't like how the paper becomes like the foundation that you're gluing everything on top of because um, it, it actually doesn't especially for something like the carousel where you don't really have a lot of surface area to glue onto the paper base um, you know you're you will get a lot of ripping and you know it is frustrating when you have to keep gluing again and again and of course as the more glue you use the more soggier it gets and so you know that becomes really difficult um, to try to keep in one piece and so I ended up actually saying screw it and actually ended up using super glue just so that it can just glue on and just stay on um, and you know it, it seemed to work later on but it did take some effort. 
So this kind of sparkling uh, hat trick thing that the card, this, the card character is um, holding um, was actually really annoying to do just because you had to cut out all these individual pieces onto this gold sheet and then um, and as you can see each one was from a template and they're really small pieces and so it's really hard to do these kind of small pieces cuts um, and then it to make matters worse um, I actually made a mistake of using the gold tin foil sheet where you're supposed to use a separate uh, I believe like a yellow sheet which was, was a little bit thicker which may have held up better for the cuts but um, I actually ended up liking the gold anyways, but it was a lot of effort for something that, that didn't really uh, matter too much. Um, so, you know, there are those little moments where um, you spend a lot of time on the small little detail just because it is a DIY kit. The, these kits are very imaginative of their use of material um, in a different way. In this case, uh, the gold uh, foil sheets were actually created uh, for the curtains. So what you do is you actually create a ribbon and then you uh, glue it on to the, the back of the fence to create kind of like a curtain entryway for the circus itself. It is needed to say that this model is very tedious because of all the extra work you have to do. Um, as you can see here for the the, um, the Ferris wheel, you actually have to do a lot of repetitive steps and it actually helps just work in the assembly line. But it is a lot of work for just one element out of you know multiple things that are going on in this kind of amusement park. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it is a very nice product and I did really like how this came out and if you're kind of curious about how uh, long a build for these box theaters usually take um, I've averaged about eight hours um, for these builds I believe some of the vertical sets are a little bit uh, it's actually like a portrait mode um, box theater sets those are a little bit smaller that they actually do take a little less time maybe seven hours and I did spend nine to ten hours on one of the builds before but usually if I start in the day, you know, I'll be done by nighttime. So it's about an eight hour build for these box theaters, which is actually pretty good considering all the DIY stuff you have to do. Because um, it, I worked on some of the other ones like Real Life's um, DIY house set. And though that one took about three weeks for me to finish. I, I wasn't working on it three weeks continuously, but you know, um, after work, I'd be working on it each day for about two about three to four hours and you know it still took a few weeks for me to do so compared to that it's actually nice to be able to finish a whole model set within a day and now that we're finishing up with one of the last pieces we're going to be getting ready to start assembling the whole set um, parts of it were already glued on to the model it's or to the box theater itself but we are now finishing up with the rest of the materials so as you can see here uh, we're going to be putting in I believe the uh, it was like a popcorn stand with the card person in front holding the uh, the magic hat and then we're putting the uh, is it an ice cream shop I believe um, or bakery sorry um, and well I did make a mistake because the bakery between the bakery and those steps was supposed to be another platform that um, I created but forgot to add on but I tried to remove it except it was glued on very tightly that at this point I didn't think that it was worth trying to rip it out um, and actually it looks pretty nice without it too you, you know it does look kind of weird that the steps kind of just go to the side of the building but considering the size of this miniature and with all the other details going on it's really not missed at all it, you, it's not a big deal if you forget one or two things um, I still think it looked pretty good, um, but that was the only real mistake I made on this set. And this is kind of where tacky glue helps because it dries pretty quickly, but not too quickly. That if I need to shift certain things while it's still drying, I'm able to do so. And the tacky glue still holds its uh, stickiness and actually still glues on pretty well. 
And so overall, I actually really do like using the tacky glue for these type of sets. And um, there is actually a clear tacky glue that you can use um, if you don't want to have any residue of the glue that you want to clean up. The clear one would actually just, you know, make it a lot more uh, invisible for the glue, and which would make it a lot easier. For these tree parts, I actually ended up using super glue just because um, it's kind of hard to hold it in place with tacky glue and make sure that it stayed. So um, just, you know, a little bit of effort using the, um, the super glue helped just put in those kind of tree branches in really quickly. And here is the final model. This one is the Box Theater set of Starlight Amusement Park is the title and is part of the travel series of the Box Theater. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this and I actually really enjoyed building this as much as I found out I was complaining, but it is a great set to play with. And so, you know, if you liked watching this video, I'll try to put up more videos um, of the Box Theaters. I have their whole set um, that I need to build. I build another one that I'm putting a video together for. So um, if you want to see more of these type of videos, please subscribe to my channel and look out for the video. And if you like what you see, please watch other videos on my channel and help support, you know, by just saying, I like this video, you know, just so that I know that you guys are watching and I feel, I know that you guys are enjoying what I put out. Uh, thank you for watching.